Hello, this is Indrani Sen and I will teach you DBMS for this semester. DBMS, the full form of DBMS is basically database management system. It is a software application which interacts with the user and manages the organization and storage of data in the database. What is data basically? It is a collection of facts. We require data for storing many things like for example your bank account information, you are admitted in an, orga in an organization institution, your, the student's admission data. Likewise we have data for so many reasons and likewise the data is growing exponentially and we need to store it and manage its storage as well. That is why we require a database management system. Some of the important database management systems which are in applications basically. So we have IMS which is from IBM information management systems which is used mainly for mainframes and it's a hierarchical database management system. Next we have IDMS which is integrated database management system which is a kind of a network database. Next we have it is a net network model. Next we have MS access which is a relational model. Okay, it is uh, by Microsoft. We are, will know about the various models later. Next, we have SQL Server 2000, which is also a relational model, and Oracle, which is a relational as well as object oriented model of database. What are the applications of DBMS? Now, wherever you look in the current era, you will see the applications of DBMS. Um, our lives uh, will not actually work in practical applications without the use of DBMS like for example you are going to the buy the railway ticket we have railway reservation and ticketing where you go to the uh, website of IRCTC and book tickets so basically we there we have the train details which are being stored as well as when you are booking the tickets the passengers details the journey details everything is being stored in the database Next we have airlines booking. We know when, wherever we want to take a flight ticket uh, from one place source to the destination, we search for uh, cheapest air flights and there we get a list of the flights which are being scheduled from source to a particular destination. So all these records are being stored in the server database and uh, from there it gets retrieved. Next hotel reservation movie ticket book, uh, booking everybody knows about book my show where you can basically book your movie tickets retail store billing if you go to a shopping mall and use and you go to pay your bills you will see that there is a uh, online there is a counter where your basically your um, devices your products are being scanned through the barcode reader and then the bills are being executed at real time then we have salary processing, uh, employees who are uh, joining the organizations, their salary are being processed with the help of salary processing software, uh, which gets the records of the employees on the leaves they have taken, the days they have attended, their attendance, their work schedules, their incentives, and it gets processed monthly through the salary processing software. Mobile address book, you are storing your contact details in the mobile and everything is being stored in a database mobile database then as a student when you are getting enrolled for an organization automatically when you give the exam your mark sheets come and uh, they come as a printed as well as on online so how do you think it gets processed it is not easy to process a huge uh, data of students mark sheets so it is through the with the help of dbms with the uh, with the help of DBMS we can access the data so easily. Newspaper printing and publications, the new the websites of news, uh, news websites uh, get changed dynamically as well as you get the newspapers every day uh, with various columns updated. It is also maintains the records are maintained through the database management system. Then another application you can see the library information system in which basically whenever uh, we go to the college library or school library or any private library there we take a issue a book and uh, instead of uh, books being issued in a register the data gets captured by the database and uh, later on when you return the book the 
data is again registered in the database in in such a case if the student does not return the book within a specific or stipulated period of time uh, it he or she will get a penalty uh, as well as the librarian will have a record as to which book is missing and uh, who has taken it what are the limitations of data processing environment this is basically why we require dbms why we require a software application for processing our data previously uh, when dbms was not in use we used to use file file based system like we have excel files you may have noticed that whenever uh, you want to keep your data for example you want to prepare uh, bill or you want to prepare a balance sheet you want to prepare a list we open excel and it's easy to store data there okay but what is the problem in excel that we have to go for database management systems we have various problems the problems are listed on the screen you can see one is data redundancy what is mean by data redundancy data redundancy means duplication of data the same data is stored in various forms in the system and what is the problem of data redundancy? The problem of data redundancy is data inconsistency. That is when you store the same thing twice or thrice in the same uh, system. If you want to change that thing, if you change the first one, first instance, the second instance may not be changed. So you have to take care that you change all the instances at the same time. Next is data integrity problems. Apart from that, for example, uh, consider in Excel you are entering a mobile number you are entering the mobile number in a list of mobile numbers so there is no no constraint that is there is no limitation that you what type of uh, data you are entering as a mobile number one can enter even character data it's not compulsory that you has to enter a number a mobile date mobile number is a number which is at least 10 digit it's a 10 digit number okay so but uh, file file based system do not impose any such constraint on the data so in that case we can have problems later on because whenever you try to access if if you give a form to the user in excel file and tell him to fill his mobile number he can fill any garbage details and later on you will have problems in accessing the same data similarly for example for age and age is a data which has to be if you are if you want the age of an employee to be minimum 18 years there is no such constraint being there on the on a file based system so what happens if somebody enters a wrong data even uh, somebody enters zero in age it will accept so that kind of problems we can have later when when we get uh, try to retrieve our information next is data access difficulty because we have uh, data in various forms in the system uh, we do not have a specifics like how to access a particular data suppose uh, for example you want to uh, open the data of uh, of only those students who are uh, physically handicapped so for that you have to if the uh, data of all the students are stored in the same file to retrieve the data of students who are only physically handicapped is difficult you have to do a search operation and then copy those data and put it in a different file so it will take a uh, diff it is a much more difficult process next is data isolate isolation what is meant by data isolation the data is stored in various files in various formats now uh, for example you do not have when you do not have a database management system there is no centralized access so you can sit in any pc and work so you are stored in in some pc excel 2007 is stored in some pc excel uh, 2003 is there in some pc you have stored the same data in table form in word so there is no standard for storing the data with what uh, then what effect does it make it the effect comes in the form of data isolation because there is no standard so there is no unique method of extracting all the data next is concurrent access anomalies concurrent access means we should have the facility of sharing the data like for example you go to a airlines uh, you go to the airport and you want to like uh, you want to book a ticket so what happens you go to the ground staff and there may be various counters where you can uh, book a ticket or you can uh, take your boarding pass there are various terminals now it if it happens like this like um, 
two people in the different terminals book the ticket of the same person two different tickets are being booked from two different terminals then what will happen so there has to be a need of data sharing that is uh, once the data once one person has booked the ticket the other person should get the information that this seat is already booked for some other person one seat, seat cannot be booked in two different people's name so because of that we can have concurrent access anomalies anomalies means problems so due to concurrent access if you want to share your data we can have problems if you are using a file system because they are not linked all the files are not linked we'll see some problems of data redundancy so as i told you data redundancy exists when unnecessarily duplicated data is found in data storage system it is typical in computer file system and in sometimes in dbms also when we are designing if the designer is not skilled enough he can do a he can make use of tables which are using redundant data we should avoid that typically for example you go th you see this two files these are the file based system in which we have a customer master file and we have an account master file both the files we are storing the address in customer also we are storing the address of the person in the accounts master also we are storing the address of the person so the same data is being stored redundantly in two different places while if the if you are talking about the same customer runa sinha who is being a account holder uh, and his file his data you are storing his address data you are storing twice in two different files what will be the implication what will be the problem the problem can be if we a request to change address and the data is being updated in one file it may not be updated in another file data inconsistency data inconsistency is an effect of data redundancy which exists when different versions of the same data appear in different places it creates unreliable information because it is difficult to determine which version of the information is correct we can see this slide in which uh, data inconsistent data as i told you the same uh, information now runa senha he has requested his address to be changed in the accounts so the uh, people of the bank they have changed the address in the accounts file but the old address still requires still is reflecting in your customer master file data integrity issues what do you mean by data integrity data integrity means uh, data when it is stored it should always be stored in an accurate way accurate and proper way so if you are storing data without any accuracy or without any kind of constraint it becomes data uh, data violates the integrity so uh, what we are talking about we are talking about for example name a data which uh, represents a name name should uh, typically consist of alphabets it should not consist of numbers or we are talking about age it should contain contain only numbers and age should not be negative so this kind of validation so this kind of constraint should be laid down in the database management system so that we have proper error checking so you go through this slide in which says the accuracy and consistency of stored data indicated by data integrity is maintained through the use of error checking and validation procedure so to enforce data integrity we uh, may lay down certain constraint for example uh, the bank people can lay down a constraint saying the customer id should be a unique number that is to more than two customers more than one customer should not have the same customer id similarly when you are opening a new account the account number should be unique that is the account number which is already there in the system it should not be repeated at least if the account is closed you can allocate that account number to somebody else but apart from that it should not be repeated what are the different integrity constraints which we can have some examples are age of a person should not be negative telephone number should be only numbers name of an elf, elf employee should be only alphabets the password should consist of a combination of upper case lower case characters so that it's difficult to guess the next problem which we have is data access difficulty 
as i told you because in a conventional file system we are storing the data in, in different different files it is difficult to access because the uh, there is no particular queries by the help of which there is no standard queries by the help of which you can get a particular data so you require to search the data in various files you have to open the files and you have to search key your data is in which file and there also in the file also you cannot go through the data directly you have to go for you have to check that exact name and spelling is correct or not and depending on that you can search your data see this is a typical spreadsheet where we are storing the students feedback details it is if you want to know ki uh, which how many percentage of the students are attending video are interested in attending video lectures at home then what we have to do we have to go through this entire file we have to put a filter we have to put a constraint and then we have to copy that data and put it in a different file and then we have to do the analysis the problem of data isolation occurs when you are storing using different files in different version for example because you do not have a standard uh, system you are you can uh, store the files different kinds of files in different versions like for example you are using in microsoft 2003 in one machine you are using 2007 in one machine you are using 2012 in one machine so in that case data access becomes difficult so data occurs in different files files can be in html format it can be in word format it can be in excel format over a long period of time files may be in different formats application programs may be in different languages sharing problem exists in case of multiple users there is no centralized data so you don't know how to share your data next we talk about concurrent access anomalies as i told you ki in a file share we have we ideally we should have a file sharing environment in which if i want to share my data to a group of employees the data should be shareable uh, but the data should be shareable but when updating it we should not have any problem for example you have an account in a branch and you have a joint account holder that is both of you you and your father hold the account in the same bank and your father tries to withdraw the money from delhi and you try to withdraw the money from mumbai at the same time now what happens if you want to if you are withdrawing money it should reflect in the balance that your money is withdrawn and from the same remain, uh, remaining money your father should get the money but if it if uh, if there are problems in sharing that both of them uh, get different balances or the same balances then you can cause inconsistency in the data okay for example you have 2000 rupees balance in your account and you have withdrawn 2000 rupees and your father wants to withdraw 1000 rupees now what happens you gave a request for withdrawal of 2000 rupees and your father gives a request of withdrawal 1000 rupees so ideally it should be first 2000 rupees should be given to you so your father should get a um, uh, get a information that balance is not there in your account but instead your father also get a uh, get to see that your balance is there in your account and withdraws 1000 rupees so this kind of issues should not be happen in a concurrent access anomaly now uh, to prevent concurrent access anomaly in file based system they have done this kind of a they lock the file for editing that is uh, if both more uh, than one person tries to open the same file they it is locked for editing so that you do not have inconsistency problem but it limits the concurrent access that is more than one person even if he is trying to use two different sheets of the same spread uh, same excel file they cannot use it because it is already the whole file is locked for editing we have studied the problems now we want to know what are the advantages of using the database management system so here basically we are uh, establishing complex relationships among different data items now in the file based system we have seen that there is no relationship which is there like we are keeping different things in different file for example branch details are in different file uh, customer details are in different file account details are in different file now in that case the problem we are having is if i want to know ki how many accounts are there in the same branch or 
if this account number exists in branch number B01 or not, then we will not be able to query. Now in this case we can see that uh, there is a table, uh, branch table in which we have branch ID, location and branch manager. Now branch ID here it, because it is a relational database management system we will learn about it how it is being stored. So the first uh, field it is known as primary key because we are storing branch ID which is unique. Each branch uh, records are being stored and their branch manager is information is being uh, updated in this file in this table. Next we have account. Now you can see in this table apart from the account number, customer ID, type of account and balance we have branch ID which is the foreign key that is we are, uh, we are linking the branch ID of the branch table with the branch ID of the account table. So this links both the records, both the records in both the tables. So what happens is if I want to query that is uh, for branch number B01 which is uh, or for example for account number uh, A00121 what is the who is the branch manager where this account is stored so I will be able to query like for example I will go to this table account table I will check that A00121 uh, is stored in branch ID branch ID B01 and B01 has branch manager Mr. Santosh Trivedi. So because these two tables or these two files are linked, we will be able to establish relationships. In, in file based system, such kind of uh, advantage is not there. Next we talk about enforcing data integrity in a system. Data integrity as I told you, it is like storing the data accurately in the storage. So here for example, we are having phone numbers. You can see the phone number is there where we are storing a mobile number and in the third uh, third row, we are somebody tries to enter a character like we want to enter ABC over there. So it gives me an error saying only numbers with 10 digits are allowed. So this is enforcing data integrity that is it will not allow you to store anything apart from whatever check is been given in the system. In, uh, we can run this in SQL where basically in Oracle SQL where we are trying to insert our member values and in that case we uh, get an error saying that member check constraint is violated because we are trying to store a mobile number which is just 5 digits and the constraint which is given is length of the mobile number length of the phone number is equal to 10 you can see here constraint we have put this constraint this is the code is uh, you learn later but uh, this is just for your information so for example we have kept the constraint here where length of the phone number is equal to 8 or the length of the phone number is equal to 10 so we can put a phone number which is either 8 or 10 we cannot put a phone number which is 5 and of course it should be only digits Next, we want to keep our control on data redundancy. So that is, we should not allow duplicate records. For example, here you can see account number of Runa Sinha, you cannot assign to some other person called Rudra Patel. So whenever we, uh, the user or the employee tries to insert a duplicate account number, he gets a error message saying duplicate account number is not allowed. Similarly, in the DBMS in Oracle SQL, you will get a whenever you try to insert a value and uh, we get an error message saying, saying unique constraint violated. That means uh, the member here, the member number is being stored as a primary key which is which cannot be duplicated. Next for efficient data access, you can see in file based system we do not have a queries but here we have queries like for example we want to select the only the customer id and name from the customer table so we can give a particular query like this select cust id comma name from customer and we get those particular cust ids and name similarly i want to delete the remove the customer whose name is name is tony so here i can write a particular query uh, delete from customer when name equal to tony and after that when i see the same uh, list of customers we can not see the tony over there 
the dbms also maintains a data dictionary what is meant by data dictionary it is basically metadata which is storing the records about the various objects which is stored in the database like for example how many tables you are being used you are creating in the database who has accessed those tables now how when did they insert the data if you want to know that that record is being stored in the database itself as a data dictionary why it is required because in case you want to audit the information for example you are not finding a particular information in your uh, database and you see that the records are being deleted from a table so you want to know ki who has access the access the tables and uh, made those changes so in that case you are able to trace out the details and uh, we can do auditing apart from that we can know ki how much memory space is allocated to each object what are the default values of the columns what are the constraint information that what are the checks which you have put in each tables what are the how many oracle users you have created how many users you have created in the data with dbms and uh, what are their user ids the role that is uh, how much role they have access, they have been granted that is what kind of rights they have which are the tables they can access what kind of rights they have on the tables whether they have read access write access or they have both read write access they have delete access all this information is stored in the data dictionary the log information like such as which users have accessed or updated various data objects at which date or time this kind of information is not available in a file based system you are not if somebody deletes a file from your system you will not be able to know if which person has deleted it because uh, it is you are going through the same user id and it is your system what time the file is being deleted file is not even uh, seen so how do you know if when it is deleted next is it can share data through centralization now you know the most uh, recent example is a bank uh, bank system in which we have core banking previously we did not have this core banking and uh, the facility of core banking is anywhere banking that is you can have a branch at any place and you can access you can access the account from anywhere in india or the world so how it is possible because we have a centralized database and whenever you are withdrawing money from the atm the data is the query is being fired or the data is retrieved from the centralized server so we have the sharing of data available to various branches and atms with the help of centralization next we have different kind of interfaces for different kinds of users in dbms uh, different kind of interfaces are available available like um, uh, for example you want a you want to access the database in web so we have a different kind of interface you want to access the database um, in natural language so in that case we have different kind of interface one uh, the exam examples of some kind some interfaces are the are as follows like you can see menu based interface we have this uh, ibm ims informis uh, server is there in which we have menu based browsing system in which you can access the database with the help of menus next we have form based interface like ms access where you can create a form where you can we are able to create a form and enter the data into the database next we have graphical user interface like for example oracle application express where basically uh, you can open uh, the database in a browser and you can access the various kinds of data in table format you can see here table different icon is there for view different icon is there so in the with the help of this you will be able to understand the system it's a very user friendly system basically next interfaces for naive users people who do not understand anything about the database for example you can talk about a uh, a shop where a shop person or a retailer he doesn't understand much about the database so he needs an interface for a naive users where he can uh, to prepare a bill he has to enter the item code batch number medicine name he, it's particular to his domain he needs not he has knowledge of his domain only and depending on that you can make a application api or a interface for uh, for particular users who are who want information or who want to store information specific to their domain 
Next, we should have different interfaces for database administrator. Database administrator is a person who is maintaining the databases. He can create the tables, he can delete the tables, he can change, add or delete a columns in the tables. So he will require a different kind of interfaces than the normal users. Data security. Our database management system compulsory has an interface with the user ID and password so that it is very much secured and the, uh, uh, when, whenever you want to create a user with a new user ID and password, you make sure that you know about it. If you want to store, it has automatic intelligent backup and recovery procedure of data. Naturally, whenever you are storing so much important and confidential data in the system, we should have the privilege to store, uh, to backup our data, to backup our data and as well as restore our data. So backup should uh, ideally happen automatically or you can schedule a backup uh, and with the help of that it will be your backup will be stored in your machine and later on if you want to restore that backup you go to that you search for that backup and you can restore restore it. The examples are any kind of websites which uh, for example which requires whatever information for example you can consider a gmail you can uh, log into your gmail account or you can create uh, your gmail accounts um, so can you imagine even users records or users data being erased from gmail so they must be having backup they have stored their backup somewhere so you it's not possible that uh, the system does not crash. You have to think about unforeseen conditions. But in spite of that, we need to uh, need to have an intelligent backup and quick recovery procedure of data. With this, we are ending with this advantages of database management systems. Thank you for hearing.